Okay, so moving on from the drawing, I've started blocking in mainly the darks and some of the greens just to suggest the trees, the foliage behind and in the back. And I've also suggested the first course of water um, as well as just a few highlights on, on the boat cover. Nothing set in stone, it's just to give me a few ideas. It's starting to wipe out some of the brown background, um, but you can see how light that brown becomes when it's set against the darker tones of the bushes and foliage. So I will carry on, I will start putting in the sky a little bit shortly and, and the main building and some of the grasses to the right hand side. And once all that's all blocked in, pretty much, then I can start detailing or adding more detail over the whole composition as I go, working the whole thing up together. Uh, while we're here, I just thought I'd show you the palette that we're using, um, apart from the fact that it's an open box M palette, which is my plein air kit. Um, I'm using a restricted, I have a black which I use with lemon yellow, um, which is good, I don't use much of it, but uh, for drawing and for the background I have umber, uh, burnt umber, and then I have a thalo cyanine green, if that's the correct way of pronouncing it. But I don't use much of that, it's sparing. Uh, it's a very vicious green on its own, but it mixes well with so many other colours and, and, and uh, almost as a one green does all. Then I've got ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Red, uh, sorry, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Lemon Yellow Cadmium, and uh, a Titanium White and Zinc White. And that's it really. Uh, hopefully I can get everything I need just from those simple colours. Um, the ruler is not for measuring stuff, it's merely to give me the odd straight line. Okay, I'll uh, come back to this when I'm a little further down the road, see what we do. Bye for now. Just moving on to the next stage now. Um, you can see that I've blocked in some of the sky in the front of the building and a little bit on the front of the boat. Now the mixes for that are basically cobalt, a little bit of alizarin crimson and white and that little bit of red into the blue kicks off against the greens and so you get this nice complementary happening and I've used the same blues pretty much slight variations uh, into uh, the front of the building and the little shadow on the boat. It creates a harmony throughout the painting. Little bits here, little bits there that all connect to each other across the whole work. Also, just a point to make sure you understand, sky holes as I call them, or as many people call them, are where you see little bits of light pumping through the trees. Now if you paint those exactly the same tone as the sky, they will appear too bright. It's because the colour is right next and directly surrounded by darks that you need to tone down just a little bit, just one or two little bits, tone down that colour so that when you do put it in, it appears to be the same colour as the rest of the sky. Just a small tip. All right, um, the green mixes have predominantly been uh, Dark, either the blacks with lemon yellow or some of the ultramarine mixes, uh, a bit of umber and some lemon yellow again, but mainly the yellow constituent has been uh, lemon as opposed to using cadmium yellow deep. Bye for now, uh, catch you very soon. Uh, we're going to continue working with this and see where it takes us next. Bye for now. Okay, so uh, we have moved on a bit. I've done a little bit of detail in the window of the house, not much more. Um, there's a few things I need to address on that. Uh, there's an angle that I think it needs to be sorted out. But basically I've done this, uh, stopped at this point where everything is almost certainly blocked in. So it's looking quite nice. The values are looking quite good across the whole thing at the moment. There's lights and darks, warms and cools. So I'm not unhappy with the way it's moving. There are a few um, corrections to make with the building, uh, which I'm sort of seeing, almost seeing as I'm videoing this now. So that will be done before you see it again. 
uh, in the meantime I will start to refine everything um, it won't be today though the day has moved on pretty fast and it's got extremely hot in the gallery so I think pretty much that's going to be it for today and I'll resume the thing uh, the painting next week when I'm back in and um, yeah look forward to it I think it's uh, being left at a right uh, at the right time and I'm feeling good about it all the best for now talk to you again soon and we'll we'll carry on with this piece bye for now okay so we've reached the little plateau uh, and we are back uh, after a break of probably close on a week actually uh, not quite but I saw some issues that I need to address with regards to some of the architecture on the building. So I shall do that uh, in this next stage. And I want to start building out some of the detail. We've blocked it all in, so now we've got to refine it. And as I did with the blocking in, I shall be working over the whole of the area. Uh, bringing the whole painting up together to a final finish. But uh, yeah, well... I'll uh, come back to it and we'll see how we're going and we'll take another look in a little while. Bye for now. Welcome back. Um, I think I've been painting for just over an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Um, it took me actually for the long absence uh, of a few days. It took me a little while to get back into this and uh, First off, I corrected what I think were the mistakes with regards to the draftsmanship on the building. Um, but then I started bouncing all over this, over the place with regards to um, the colour. The greens are a load of different greens uh, relating to the shrubbery and the bushes and the trees. Very cool. I use mainly lemon yellow, mixing it either with uh, tholo green and whites and violets. Also, um, ivory black with lemon yellow makes a great green that recedes and, and uh, helps out tremendously. I developed some of the water. I developed both the boats and the tarpaulings thereupon. And also uh, brightened up the light on the building itself. So it's maybe not as purply blue as this video is showing because I can see the screen as I'm filming it. And it does look distinctly different to that which I'm looking at in reality. So there's something to be said for filming, but um, hopefully you get a better idea or you get some idea of what's happening with this. And uh, we will push on. So uh, I'm not gonna ramble too much, but uh, you can see that from the last one, uh, from the last report, that we've been building images. And we've been going all over the painting bit here, bit there, and slowly developing the lights and the darks, the warms and the cools, uh, using our limited palette. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will slowly come kicking and screaming to a conclusion. We'll see. Anyway, that's enough for now. I'll uh, come back to you a little bit later and uh, with, a, with an update. Thank you. Bye for now. Welcome back, everyone. Um, the detail is starting to build in this and uh, the progress is such that it becomes a little slower um, only because you are refining but you can see I put lots of little sky holes in the trees and develop the leaf structure um, bit in the foreground, I haven't done too much to the water put a bit of detail into the building itself I don't want to put any more in, I just feel that that's enough and um, yeah, it's sort of on the home of stretch really. I've mixed lots of greens up for the trees, as you can see, Thelocyne mixed with lemons and cad deep and reds. I've used the black and lemon. Um, so lots of little pools of colour there to dive into and lots of options. If you look carefully, you've got lots of blues and lots of reds and greens. They're all sort of playing around with each other in regards to complementaries. So the yellows and the violets, the greens and the reds are the roof of the thing, uh, of the, you know, the thatch roof, and uh, also in the water. So lots of little complementary um, accents 
as well as of course just the fewer colours being used which allows then a harmony to start occurring across the whole painting. And not to forget, if you're using sky holes, or you know, if you're putting little touches of, of uh, sky through the tree foliage, go a little tone a darker, or two, two points darker than the sky itself, or else your sky holes will not look right. Just a little tip. But um, yeah, so so we're on the homeward stretch. I'm going to be refining um, probably the next video will be the conclusion actually. Uh, I hope to uh, sort of nail this one fairly soon. Uh, sit back a little while once I think it's finished before I video it and tell you it's finished. All the best for now. Catch you soon. Bye bye. Welcome back. I think possibly for the last time. Um, I've worked over the whole of the area, bringing up the highlights and the different tones, keeping them alive. I wanted this to be strong sunshine. Now the photograph is quite dull um, and although I recorded it in sunshine, the camera and photography is not my best forte, but it never lived up to the colour that I saw and remember. So I put that back in uh, on purpose. But I quite like the result, and well, I do like the result, so I won't be showing it to you. Um, but it's um, lots of complementaries, lots of highlights. I will keep looking at it um, for the next couple of days. So the thing is that if I don't uh, see anything I want to change, this is it. Otherwise, there will be an update. Um, but at the moment, it's looking fine and uh, I'm happy with the result and I've stopped at the moment it's the end of the day and I think I've done enough but um, there's always a tendency to work way too far into a painting and know when to stop uh, I'm not sure if I quite reached that yet and that's why I often take time out for a little while just to sit and look and peruse and make decisions so yeah all being well, I can put this together as a little video and um, some of you can enjoy it. I hope you all do. All the best for now. Until the next time when I will do another demonstration and I'll stage it like this or film the entire thing. But look out on my website which is uh, www.paulapsfineart.com uh, You can always make comments on this or on my YouTube channel which is Paul Apps Fine Art. Uh, always subscribe if you can please that will be great and also um, leave me comments and also visit the website thank you very much all the best uh, catch you next time bye for now hi guys welcome back uh, I was hoping I wouldn't have to do a little update but um, when I looked at this picture later on I realized there was a huge discrepancy of light based upon that of the boats and that that was seen on the thatched building. So I decided that I needed to spend a bit more time on it. And I tweaked a few lights on not only on the thatching but on the boats as well as it happened. One or two other places just need to bring it up. So that is the only update. Um, I wanted to bring the sunlight as much on the thatching as it was on the tarpaulings of the boat covers. Uh, hopefully I've achieved that and uh, yeah, that'll be it really. Uh, this one can be signed off and I hope you've enjoyed the uh, painting with me um, as much as I've enjoyed doing it. Please check out, as I've said before, check out the website, check out my YouTube channel, Paul Apps Fine Art, subscribe to it, um, place any comments, you're more than welcome. But I hope to see you um, either in the gallery or certainly uh, when I uh, put a new video out on some more painting. All the best for now. Take care. Bye-bye.